everyone. Welcome to the third episode of In a Nutshell. I am Deja Pilgrim and I am a grade 12 podcast editor. Speaking with me today is Sky Reed Calder. Hi everyone. I'm a grade 12 student and excited to be on the podcast. Today's episode will focus on self-love, self-care, motivation, and growth. I'm very excited to get into such an important topic that we're both very passionate about. Yeah, definitely. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's get into what we have in store for today. What's on the agenda, Sky? We'll be discussing some upcoming school events and initiatives in this segment. Then Amelia will interview Ms. Kim. And finally, we will answer some student questions. Yes, yeah, so be sure to stay tuned. All right, so speaking of school news, the annual De La Salle Grad Art Show is quickly approaching. Yay! Exciting, right? The grade 12 art students have been working very hard all year, and on the week of May 17th, some phenomenal work will be showcased. Unfortunately, due to our circumstances, it is very likely that this year's art show will be once again virtual. Oh, that's a shame, but at least the art show isn't cancelled. No, that would be tragic. I definitely want to see what my fellow students have created over the year, and I'd like to showcase my work as well. Yeah. So with Mother's Day coming up on the 9th, Megan's Hug is also fast approaching, and although we are all online, we can still support this initiative. The LaSallian youth team are selling masks to raise money for Megan's Hug. I'm not sure when they'll be available, but we'll probably receive more information about it in the school email. Oh, that's awesome. I cannot wait for this initiative to get started. Anyway, I heard you mention Mother's Day. That's happening already? Yeah, I know. (laughs) Time flies, honestly. But yeah, that's right. Not to mention, the school year is almost complete. I'm already imagining the hot summer days. I'm so ready. Yeah, it's almost here, but don't get too ahead of yourself, Deja. We still have a few bio and chem assignments left. And don't forget about that chem ISU presentation. Oh, no. You know, I did not need reminding. I was doing just fine, but had that in the back of my head. Anyway, all classes will remain online until the stay-at-home order is lifted. So that means we'll continue to use our most prized and beloved app, Microsoft Teams. Uh, Yeah, that's definitely been my favorite app over the past lockdown. Right? Most used app, I'm pretty sure. We speak for everyone. (laughs) Yeah, that along with Zoom. Oh, I rarely use Zoom. What do you personally use it for? Oh, I've watched some like university meetings to learn more about like universities I've applied for. Right. I believe that's the only time I use the app. Yeah. It really was not of much use for me. Yeah. On a more serious note, the verdict for the George Floyd trial was just determined. Yes, ex-cop Derek Chauvin was convicted on all three charges. Based on the evidence presented, the jury found him guilty. Yes, second degree unintentional murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. Yes. This is so important because this verdict will most likely set a precedent so that justice can be served for future cases of police brutality. Yeah, definitely. And the other officers involved at the time will feel the weight of their actions as well. Now, before we continue on to the interview, let's talk a bit about today's topic, shall we? So we'll be talking about self-love, self-respect, confidence, motivation, and growth. Yes, this topic is so, so important because our mind and body is our temple, you know? I believe we should always strive to keep it physically and mentally healthy by treating ourselves with respect, achieving our desired goals, and learning to accept ourselves and our mistakes in order to grow and thrive. Yes, absolutely. Self-love is one of the most important things, but also one of the hardest things to do. Some ways to improve on self-love is to appreciate the qualities that you do have, feeling comfort within yourself, recognizing and knowing that your feelings and needs are worthwhile, and knowing the truth that you are enough exactly the way you are, regardless of whether or not people can see it. For sure. You said that perfectly, Sky. That was great. Well, this brings us to our interview with Miss Kim. So here today, joining us in, on a, in a nutshell, we have Miss Kim, one of Dell's fabulous science teachers. She was a student at Dell all the way from grade five to grade 12 and is now teaching us. Thank you so much, Miss Kim, for joining us today. 
So today we've asked you to join us on the podcast to talk about managing mental health during a pandemic and especially now during this third lockdown. Mm -hmm. So we're going to begin by asking you some questions about mental health and self-love and towards the end maybe we'll just touch on any advice you have for students. So this should be fun. So the first question we have is how do you think self-love and self-care importance can be addressed in a school setting? So it's a great question. And first of all, I'd like to say thanks for uh, inviting me to your podcast. I'm really excited to chat with you. Um, But in terms of self-love and self-care, I think the most important thing is to not assume that people know what it is and not assume that people are always thinking about it. So, I mean, as teachers, for example, we should be modeling self-care and self-love. So I remember one time I was telling my students, you know, I was going to have something marked for them by Monday and I didn't get it done. And I felt so bad. But when I was talking to them, I was like, listen, everyone, I just I was having a tough weekend, a little overwhelmed. So I didn't mark them, took a break. And, you know, I was actually really pleased with how well the students took that honesty and, you know, seeing that I needed to give my, myself a break. So I took it and then I promised to get it to them as soon as possible, got it to them to the next class. Right. So, I mean, we should all be modeling for each other. Um, We should be talking about it in classrooms. So it shouldn't just be the responsibility of, you know, student services that does such a great job with it. It should be really everywhere in the school. Talk about it with your peers. Talk about it with your teachers. um, And the more that we can have the conversation, the better. Yeah, for sure. So sometimes, like, understanding your own mental health is confusing. And like you talked about, you know, that weekend for you. So, a lot of people feel lost when it comes to coping and then maybe like what's some advice you have for young people struggling with this? For sure. So, I mean, I think it's really important for everyone to recognize that you're not alone. So when you're feeling lost, it's so much worse when you think that you're lost and alone, right? So there's so many different people who are experiencing the same struggles as you are, not the exact same struggles, but just know that you're not alone. Um, so reaching out again, kind of similar to what I was saying, there's lots of structures in place at our school and outside of the school, um, for students to reach out if they're feeling, if they're feeling lost. And so, I mean, I can promise you that, uh, myself as a teacher, if a student ever came to me and they were feeling a little bit lost and they were struggling, I would do whatever I could to make sure I could help that student and direct them to the places they need to go if necessary. Um, and also for students to know that, you know, when you ask for help, don't think that that's a weakness. When you ask for help, that's actually a really strong, a really big sign of your strength because you're doing what you have to do for yourself to get that extra help. Okay. So what are some like hobbies or activities that you've taken on to stay motivated during the pandemic and also in general? Um, so th- not too many things, but um, I have started working out virtually, which is not something that I've ever done really in my past. So the first little bit was kind of funny as I was figuring it out. But uh, that is one thing that makes me feel really good. I do it a, a couple of times with a friend online. Uh, so that's really great. And I've also started knitting. So I taught myself how to knit and I'm I'm slowly evolving away from scarves. I've learned how to knit my first sock. And so that's uh, bringing me some joy as well. Miss, I did the exact same thing, <laughs> working out and knitting. Really? I, made my whole, I made a whole cardigan and it's it's sitting. I have yet to wear it. But a whole cardigan? So you're it, much more advanced than me. It, it, was, it was like 72 different squares and they had to put it all together. I ended up just crocheting most of it. Oh the, knitting, the knitting took about three months and then I finished the rest in the two months with crocheting. But... but it- but it's a, it's fun though, right? I find it very therapeutic and relaxing. So it is. That's once you good get the final, you. yeah, once you get the final product, it's like, okay, this is pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, how have you, like, you you spoke about like how you, or we know that you went to grade uh, Dell from grade five to twelve, and how have you improved slash become more aware by your own mental health since you were a student at Dell? So, um, I definitely think the conversations that are happening about mental health are much more common now than they were even when I was a student. So having those conversations, period, is a really great way to kind of understand your own mental health and the own, your own struggles. Um, one of my biggest things that I've started, or I guess I could say I've stopped doing as I've gotten older that has really helped my mental health is stop it, stop comparing myself to everyone else. So I remember as a student around exam season, I would be so, so stressed out. You know, what are you studying? Are we studying the same things? Like, am I prepared? You seem so confident. Why am I freaking out? And so comparing myself to what other people around me were doing was something that I I did throughout all of high school, 
through the couple first years of my university. And once I realized that everyone is different and everyone studies in their own ways, copes in their own ways, once you start figuring that out and you stop comparing yourself to other people, it does so much for your, for, it did so much for my own mental um, health well being for sure. The exam period is a stressful time. Mm-hmm. I, I can say I have felt that, that pressure of who's studying what. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what's been your favorite memory from lockdown so far? Um, so actually, I mean, I don't talk about my personal life too much, but um, actually during the Easter break, I got engaged. So that is really? very happy news for me. Yes. That's amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. I, I, I'd say that's a pretty good lockdown memory. Yeah, it's a nice little shining spot in this lockdown situation. <laughs> yeah. So moving on to teaching at home. So like, what's been your favorite part of teaching at home? And then what's been your least favorite? Um, so my favorite part I can say is that I can snack anytime I want. That (laughs) is really lovely. I have refound my love of chocolate covered pretzels. And so I've got a steady supply of those right now. Um, but in terms of least favorite, I mean, I, I think we all feel this. There is something, um, there's something intangible about being in the same room as people, right? The, the small little cues you get from each other, the little jokes you can make, and it really just isn't captured online. So the thing I am missing the most is being in the room with my colleagues and of course with my students. Yeah. And then slowly to wrap up, what's some advice you can give to students to help stay motivated during lockdown? Yeah. So this one's a tough one. This is a tough question. Um, one of my friends from Dell, actually, she sent me this article about um, this emotion that so many people are feeling that's called languishing, which means it's just the absence of well-being. So you're not doing awful, but you're not doing great. You're just kind of blah. You're like in the middle. And it's really hard to motivate yourselves when you're feeling this way because you don't even know you're feeling this way. So I I actually talked to the LaSalle and Youth team last, uh, last Friday. We had a conversation about mental health. And I was saying, you know, one of the best things you can do is set goals for yourself. And it doesn't have to be a big goal, like little goals to just have something for you to do in a day. So for myself right now, my daily goal, aside from teaching, of course, is to make my bed. And it's not something that I I used to do very often, if I'm being honest, but it's a small task that when I do it, you feel accomplished. And then at the end of the day, getting into a nice made, nicely made bed instead of like a Mm -hmm. mess of sheets, it's, it's rewarding in a way. Mm -hmm. So like small little goals that you can accomplish that will make you feel good. And I would also say like, make sure you give yourself some you time. So like have a scheduled piece of time in your week or every day where you do something that just brings you happiness. So, you know, whether that's a TV show or knitting or working out or whatever, just make sure you have some time that you dedicate to just yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely the lockdown's been interesting, but I think I've I've had a lot of me time. That's good. (laughs) Well, that's it for all of our questions. I'd like to thank you for joining our podcast and we'll talk soon. Absolutely. Great, so we are now on to our final segment, student Q&A. Yay! (laughs) The first question is, how do I deal with people's judgments of me? Well, people will always have an opinion, and they are entitled to their own opinion. But it is so important not to take these opinions personally, because they are not defining factors of your being, and they don't know the whole story. So their judgments are not an accurate representation of who you are as an individual. However, if you fear what others think of you, then I would suggest looking into boosting your own confidence and self-esteem. We all have areas in need of improvement, and even though it is not an easy task, we can all overcome these limitations. I absolutely agree, and because they don't know everything about you, you definitely shouldn't take their judgments or negative actions personally, especially since they are viewing life from their perspective. Their judgments are most likely a projection of their own internal problems. People who are content with themselves do not go out of their way to bring others down. The most important thing is your value in yourself, which should not be dictated by anyone other than you. How you feel about yourself matters more than how other people feel about you. At your core, you are enough exactly how you are, and if other people don't see that, then those aren't the people you want in your life anyways. As Mr. Vlahovic said, the people who matter don't care, and the people who care don't matter. Yes, always try to surround yourself with positivity. Definitely. So our next question is, 
what are some active steps to practice confidence and self-love? Definitely know your self-worth and that you are enough. Everyone is equal in respect to worthiness and essence. It is also very important to always stay true to yourself and not to try to become someone that you are not. But understanding this and by adjusting your mindset to actively loving yourself, building confidence will already be in practice. Yes, exactly. Love and embrace all that you have. You will be on the right path to self-satisfaction and self-appreciation. Yes, Deja, I absolutely agree. Actively having that desire and making that intention for self-love is so powerful. Start by identifying what you have to be grateful for and start a gratitude journal. Express yourself through the arts. Like Deja said, accept and embrace both what you love and what you don't about yourself. Watch online videos about how to improve self-love and self-confidence. These are all places to start. It's never too late to become the person you truly are. You can begin healing, growing, and flourishing now. Wow, I really like that. What really stood out was a gratitude journal. How did you come up with that? Yeah, I just read up about it and found that it can be beneficial for improving self-love, and especially during this time of the pandemic. Sometimes it's really important to take a second and think about everything that you have and what you're grateful for. Yeah, I really like that. So guys, try that out. So, what's the next question? Our next question is, how do I balance my life and avoid solely focusing on one aspect? For example, setting boundaries for myself when it comes to work. Ooh, good question. First, understand that work is not your entire life. It's not everything, so you shouldn't treat it like it is. It is so important to spend your time in more than one way that fulfills you. I suggest making a vision board. It's inspiring, it's personal, and motivating. Start by envisioning what you'd like to achieve, new skills you'd like to gain, or who you'd like to spend time with, and write that down. Make it appealing by decorating it, adding pictures, and customizing it to your liking. This will disperse your focus to multiple avenues of interest, and should bring new experiences into your life, so you're not investing all of your attention to one single aspect. Like Deja said, Balance is so vital, so you don't neglect what's important, and you're able to nourish all aspects of your life so you can find fulfillment. I think scheduling time for various things in your life is a great place to start to help you find balance. Definitely. Great. So the next question is, how can I reframe my mindset for growth? What I would say is to look at failures as an opportunity to learn and grow. Persist in the face of setbacks and learn from criticism. Find inspiration in others' success. Know that good qualities such as intelligence can be developed and always be open to learning and growing. Yes, I definitely agree. And don't be fearful about getting out of your comfort zone and taking on challenges in life. From these experiences, you will learn more about yourself, such as your strengths and weaknesses, your preferences and dislikes, and have a deeper insight as to who you are as a whole. Not only will the end result be rewarding, but you will also notice how much you've grown. Yes, I love that. Stepping out of your comfort zone is so important to developing a growth mindset. So the second last question we have is, how do I stop putting my self-worth on things that won't last forever? Wow, very good question. What I'd say is that your self-worth must come from you, not from anything outside of yourself. Because things and people come and go, but you are with yourself for the rest of your life. And no one can take your self-worth away from you. Make an effort to stand on your own in order to develop your sense of self-worth. Because you are already enough and valuable. You just have to feel that within yourself. Yeah, you answered that perfectly. Would you like to ask the last question? Yes. What is a personal mantra or affirmation that I can use to help conquer negative thoughts myself? Great question. Telling yourself that you're worthy, strong, kind, funny, that you're loving and caring, that you're enough, and that you have a purpose can definitely conquer these negative thoughts. You have to feel it within yourself in order for these affirmations and mantras to take their full effect. In regards to negative thoughts, 
Don't let them consume you to the point where it hinders your growth. You are your worst critic. Sometimes a criticism has truth. Use that criticism constructively by acknowledging aspects that you'd like to improve. But other times it can be very self-deprecating and hateful. Don't make yourself your own enemy. Try to apply the advice that myself and Sky share today to overcome this. Thank you for asking such great questions. They were a lot of fun to answer, and I hope that our advice helps. Well, it looks like it's the end of this episode. Yes, it is, but I had a blast. Yeah, so did I. Thanks for listening to this episode of In a Nutshell. Bye. Bye. Bye.